was there say thank you for still being there listening to Rock City 101.9 FM here in Abelkuta. Time for us to take you around Citizens Forum on the Daybreak Show, that time of the day, in which uh, we intelligently rub minds on different topical national, could be local or international issues that has to do with what you do on a daily basis. Daily, how you do? It's my name. And I am Toby uh, Joseph. Uh, this morning on Citizens Forum, we'll be looking at uh, the leadership question. A lot has been said about uh, the leadership uh, of Nigeria. Some have called it a rudderless. Some have said it is uh, mainly poor, while others have said it is uh, uh, a leadership without a focus, without ideas, without uh, the necessary creativ creativity and vibrancy that can actually pull Nigeria out of uh, the present abyss uh, he, she finds herself. Uh, recently, uh, former president, Lucia Gombasunjo, uh, stirred uh, the hornet's nest uh, recently when he said that uh, the bane of Nigeria is still leadership, poor leadership, uh, actually, uh, saying that Nigeria's economic and infrastructural situation uh, is uh, still in shambles. And so it uh, can be traced only uh, to a leadership. Uh, well, he vaguely uh, alluded to the fact that he believes that uh, his own generation might have uh, not done much uh, to actually uh, elevate the sovereign of the people, uh, doing everything right and putting Nigeria on a very solid and strong footing. But at the same time, what about the new generation that has actually come after that older uh, 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 generation? Uh, people will also say that uh, you cannot really blame the leadership uh, squarely if you cannot also point some fingers at the followership, in quotes, uh, because uh, eventually uh, people who become leaders are uh, oftentimes followers uh, before they actually get to that position. And even if you become a leader, there's always somebody that mounts pressure on you, uh, the, the followership, those that have been characterized as uh, uh, as beggars, those who go cap in hand uh, to politicians, amount pressure on them, force them to steal, force them to do a lot of uh, corrupt practices so that they can keep that position and perpetrate themselves in uh, power. And the followership also may have uh, some uh, blame as regards uh, holding their leaders accountable. How informed are the followership? How do they hold the leaders accountable? Do they ask questions? Do they make sure? Uh, that uh, leaders answer to them during, or before, during, and after elections, uh, instead of having cases where senators become senators, and then when they move to Abuja, to the hollow chambers, they forget about all the nooks and crannies they actually can vast for votes, and then they do or achieve nothing uh, uh, for the period of four years they spend as senators. The same goes for other uh, uh, political leaders uh, from uh, the local government level to the state level and of course uh, to uh, the federal level. We are trying to put all this together in uh, solving uh, or providing answers to the leadership question in Nigeria. We have someone uh, qualified to do this in the studio. We have Mr. Wale Adedayo, the publisher of Uhuru Times a newspaper a former Chief Press Secretary to the former Governor of the State, Antonio Adrenga Daniel, and the former Director General of the Legamashi Campaign in uh, the PDP in the new State. You are welcome to the day of the Mr. Thank you. Oh, I forgot to add, you are also the author of Microseconds Away From Death. Yeah. All right. Now, um, Mr. Waladidayo, would you say truly that Nigeria's bail is leadership? No, it's not leadership, you say. Uh, with due respect to former President Olusha Gwambasinja, I will not agree that uh, Nigeria has been having poor leadership. When you say poor leadership, in what sense? In terms of intellect, in terms of wealth, or in terms of educational qualification? Uh, the late President Omar Yaradu, for God's sake, was a, not just a university graduate, he was a lecturer. Former President Goodluck Jonathan, um, was not just a graduate, he had a PhD, he was a university lecturer. For Boston John himself, I mean, he erudite loads of stuff um, upstairs. Um, General Buhari, I mean, former GOC, former military head of state, you can't say those kind of leaders 
something that they are poor or something. What I see is wrong with Nigeria. It's not a question of poor leadership. Because if you use the word poor, I think you're getting it wrong. What we have had, which other countries do not have, is what I call leaders who are not selfless. We've had selfish leaders. What do I mean by selfish leaders? Ordinarily, ordinarily, a leader who is in office should not want to die in office. You are sick and you know that you are terminally ill. If you really have the love of the people at heart, for God's sake, you have no option than to resign. You shouldn't go to the extent of dying in office. You rather have died in office. That shouldn't have been so. You can't say he was a poor leader, either in terms of wealth or in terms of intellect. But the thing is, most of our leaders are there because of personal reasons. They want to ensure they continue to be there for selfish reasons, not because of the people they want to serve. If you know that you want to serve the people, there are interests you ought to protect, not your personal. You sacrifice your personal interests. I'll give you a quality example. For God's sake, to me in Nigeria today, the average leaders we have, they are in the military. In the military, let's take the guys fighting Boko Haram. Six of you in a patrol, you you were ambushed, almost encircled. One has to sacrifice his life so that the others can escape. That is leadership. Sacrifice. What if that guy opted out? Oh, I've got children, I've got a wife at home. Why should I die for the other? Then all of them will be wiped out. It is the same thing as someone who is in a leadership position. What we have had in Nigeria over the years is that the average leader, whether at the level of governor, local government chairman, or presidency, they've not given much thought to Project Nigeria or to the Nigerian people themselves. It is just me, 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 me. In that case, you are not talking about poor leadership. You are talking about selfish leaders. So using the word poor to me, I think is, is a different thing. Somebody leaves... Look at councillors, for instance, now. The major achievement by which a councillor will be measured. No, he built a house when he was in office. He bought a car when he was in office. Same thing for the local government chairman. Somebody gets in there as governor. It's the number of houses or the number of chief chancy titles he was able to take. The number of billions in his account. Not the number of people who were educated in that state. Not the number of people who gained employment, not the number of people who went into businesses in that state while that person was there. So essentially, I don't I don't believe in this question of uh, poor leadership. Uh, it's not a question of poor leadership. It's a question of selfish leaders. Okay, um, let's um, again look at it. We, talk, we are talking about leadership. Obviously, there will be followership. And on this occasion, the followership is the people. And then the leaders supervise or superintend over government. Now, if you say we have selfish leadership, how selfish, you, leadership. selfish, sorry, selfish, selfish leadership or leaders, yeah. how will you describe the followers who absorb the selfishness? No, there is this wrong notion that a people deserve the kind of leaders they have, and it is possibly that is the reason for our problems in Nigeria. On that score, too, I disagree wholeheartedly with that. Why do I say that? In in reality. You, you can compare what is happening to evangelism or when you say God sends a prophet to the world to come and preach to the people. Ordinarily, the average person does not want to have anything to do with God or his word or whatever. But these prophets, these evangelists, selflessly on their own, through deprivations, through problems and so on, they bring the light and they shine in the life of an unwilling people. Not, it's just like the laws now. You see people driving against traffic. You think they don't know there's a law against traffic? And you, you think they don't know that it's in their own benefit that they follow the right traffic? No. Our inclination, naturally, is towards doing the wrong thing. So only very, very few people that God has placed in position of leadership who will come out and do that which is right. It is not, you can say the periodic elections people will come out and vote for the right leader. Yeah. To me, you will only be deceiving yourself. A comical character is the president of the U.S. now, for God's sake. So are you going to blame the Americans for that? Even if he has found himself in that kind of position, then he should transform himself into a proper leader. Because like I said, to me, the example of a leader, one, I'll pick a soldier, that's number one. Two, I'll pick an evangelist or a prophet. Not today's prophets who charge thousands when people have a 
problem. So a selfless person who will be ready to sacrifice, knowing fully well that if he dies or when he dies, there's a reward for him out there. Or there's something he will be remembered by after his death. Oh, this is what this person has done. Scientists too, quality scientists are among that. Because some of these things you are enjoying, some people died to bring them about. The people who discovered them, electricity, aeroplanes, and so on, a lot of died, a lot of them died in the course of their experiments. You, you understand what I'm saying? So it, it's not a question of putting the blame on the people. No. Once God has singled you out to be somewhere as leader, to direct the affairs of the people, you have to execute that mandate in a manner that shows that look, you are selfless, you are out there to do what is right for the people, expecting the people to pick some saints. Oh God, go back to the question of Aula now. The Ekitis, on those and Elisha people, they are the most educated in the whole of your valor now. But ask yourself when free education started, I will last election in those places now. They didn't want it, the people voted against it because of free education. But later, when the man started in the other places, and they discovered that wow, this idea is fantastic, they followed him. Initially, you might have problems, but you cannot, because of that, now say it is a bit naturally. Yeah, uh, well, uh, this is getting interesting. Let me again find out from you. You've had the opportunity to be in government yeah. to look at governors from a vintage point. Now, let's take 1999 to date. We've had so many of these leaders. Um, let's look at 1998, 36 governors that we've produced. Uh, 774 local government chairmen, these are leaders and then head of states. And we still complain of this uh, inability to get the selfless leaders that are there. So, what is then the problem? Is it the house in which they move into? Is it the people, the institution they work with? Or is it again because the people you are talking about do not know what to? how to have or what being a selfless leader will be no, no, no there are three there are three levels to it let me start first from what we spoke about earlier you're talking about selfless leaders one if few of them get into office they somewhere along the line they miss it you understand what i'm saying they, they allow psycho fans to drill them from where they started from from where they were going before i think the only one i can single out out of all of them we too, but the first one should be president. I mean, former president to be shown on Basaji himself. What kind of places are you going to show on Basaji? Doesn't give a shit. It doesn't give a damn about you. You call yourself a press singer, and you want him to behave in a particular way. For God's sake, he's a senator. He rises above all those things. But the average governor, the average person, they prefer bootlickers to be around them. I mean, when you combine that with the fact that the leader is not even selfless. Then it becomes another thing. I've had instances when it was, I think it was uh, somebody who was uh, responding to a while back. I think the person was castigating him and he said, Look, I put my foot down to ensure that a Nigerian got this. And that's how he became a billionaire. Because foreigners came to bid for some things and he was like, Look, I mean, he didn't know the person from Adam. This is a Nigerian now. The Nigerian must get this thing because we need to build our people up. That is leadership. Then on the, on the other hand, too, the praises often get into the heads of leaders, and it has to do with that uh, number number one. When praises get into their heads too much, they get swollen headed, and then they just drill from where they are coming from. Um, Ruben Abati wrote a column recently about the demons in Asura. To me, I think it's just um, a metaphorical description of the same thing we're talking about. It's not it's not a spiritual thing to me. I say it has more to do with the disposition of the individual when you are being praised. You, know, you become power drunk. Yeah, no, not, not power drunk, really. When somebody becomes power drunk, you start misusing your power. No, this one's only misuse power. They just don't even do anything at all. It's just like um, today now, with due respect to those of them who are Christians, when I was growing up, I don't see the photograph of any pastor or bishop on posters they, they calling for evangelism or things like that. Yes, Jesus, they promote there, they promote God, they promote Jesus. But today, the praises of daddy, daddy, geo, daddy, this and that, it is the pictures of the owners of the church or the leadership of the church. You see that the thing is getting into their head as if, and God said, all praises are due to Him, not to an individual. 
that the same thing that is happening in the political is also happening in the in the religious so who are you going to blame for that that's why i'm saying that the leaders those that god has put the either through elections by appointment or through some other means they must rise above public sentiments above all this um intoxicating influence of praises and so on you know to do what is right to do what they are supposed to do because if they don't do it then they will continue to miss it That's all, all, all right now the the issue uh, we were discussing earlier uh, had to do with uh, youth being given the chance no, uh, no, to, no, to no, prove no, no. to prove their worth what do i mean by youth at least those who belong to a younger generation below no 50 I, I, I disagree with that i've below. always quarreled with that argument i've always quarreled with who, who are you who, why who are you talking about the youth? people below age of 50 or people below age of 40. for god's sake since 1999 we've had several of them who have been in positions of power and authority so what power has been handed over to the youth if you do if you distinguish yourself we are we are we are in a climb that especially in in your balance here, where we are, whether you are older, once you are good, how old is your new people? Nobody clamored that the youth should be should be king now. They saw the quality in him, the kind of person he is, and he was handed the baton of uh, leadership of the ancient times. You know, to me, I don't believe that this is the, any use for something. Go through it. The former governor of this state, who I served, uh, Benga Daniel, he was under 50 when he became governor. How old was the Michigan College when he became the speaker? Are you saying he was not a youth? No, well, the, the, yeah. the argument is this. Uh, if you look at what you need to win elections in Nigeria yes. to get to this position that we yes. are talking of, uh, it appears it goes beyond the youth. They don't have the means. And I've just given you an example of people you can categorize as youths who were in leadership position through the same process you are arguing against. Uh, no, th that could also be faulted. Uh, uh -huh. that, yes, uh, some of these people had the so-called godfathers or people the 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 a platform I, they rode upon to yes, catch that the yes. medical of course okay. we don't know okay. um, how he got it depending of his father and things like that that if you continue to hand it over to them that way only minimal number of them will get the opposition the ones that will do it will not have it and therefore conscious effort should be made to let them have such position. I was under 40 when I became the director of organization PDP of I didn't have any godfather here. I was political editor of the punch. It was from the punch, Nero Malawi invited me into their system. It was him who brought me to Abekuta. Nobody else. It was Nero Malawi invited me. So what are you talking about godfathers? See, there is nowhere in the world where you wouldn't need a platform, where you wouldn't need people. It's called networking, no? How many users have succeeded? A lot of users have succeeded in business now. Mana doesn't, Mana will not fall from heaven for anybody. If you know that that is what you want to do, then you join a political party, set up your own group there. For God's sake, if you are talking about somebody handing over to the youth, you'll be deceiving yourself. Go and check the statistics. The voters uh, register, I mean, it's public. You can always ask from INEC. Between 60 to 70 percent of registered voters, and they are youths. So what are you talking about that somebody hand over power to the youth? Whoever is serious as a youth and wants to get into government, government or elected position, but the next thing for you to do is to organize. It's like you are doing a business. If you don't know how to run your business and you want government to be doling out money to you all the time, but God said that doesn't make sense. I'm not one of those who support that some youth should be in fact give them some quota somewhere so that they can be so no. If the youth is really serious about getting into governance, for God said then the person should go and organize and get that. Like I told you, sixty to seventy percent of voters in Nigeria are youth. So, so you you disagree with the position of voters or culture uh, who has vowed that anybody who is under fifty cannot uh, succeed in uh, no, uh, sorry, no. and what is over uh, 50 cannot succeed in as governor Richard, because the, it is that group that see, has uh, my brother, that is situation. pure propaganda because the guy is becoming I'm an APC member with due respect but the guy is becoming more and more unpopular in the states and, and he knows that majority of the voters in the states they are under 50 so he's just doing that to pander to their own uh, sentiments you understand there is no big deal about it at all it is not him. In fact, that one, the statement he made is even undemocratic. Is he the one that will pick the next governor? And that is precisely what you are talking about. Is he supposed to influence the choice of the next governor or leave that to the people of the state? And that is one of the challenges we have in Nigeria. He has no business saying that. That is very, very undemocratic of him. He has said that. Very, very undemocratic. But, but that statement you... should not have come from him at all. Now, are you saying that... Uh, uh people who eventually be leaders who become who will become uh, uh, predecessors uh, should not actually groom successors uh, because we always talk about uh, uh, there's, there's nothing wrong in grooming successors uh, you will recall just uh, the u.s example you gave uh, yeah. president obama uh, 
uh, did everything possible to make sure Hillary Clinton took over. Uh, Not in the way we do it in Nigeria. Okay. Because you you should you need to look at where Obama himself was coming from, because by the time he was coming into the system, he came into the Chicago system, became a senator. The, the leaders which you were arguing against now, he was given the platform to address the Democratic National Congress. Yes. You understand what I'm saying? He did his networking in such a way that he appealed to the leadership of his party. And they saw in him a bright young man who had a lot of potential for the future. He was given, I mean, ordinarily, people who are asked to address the once and four years uh, convention. They are usually notable people, powerful people, people who are cerebral, people who the people really like that. Oh, this one is a good one. He was given the platform to address them. And, and that was the time people started talking about it. See, man, see, this guy is going places. He's likely to be the next president of the U.S. If he doesn't win, fine. But it's likely to be the next democratic nominee. That is what I used to be doing now. Not the question of waiting for somebody to come and... Push. You need to network. You need to move into the right places, move into the right... Um, systems so that they display what you have for god's sake where are you coming from what is your qualification what have you done before what have you achieved before so simply because you are under 50 you come and be governor what have you done with your previous business what did you do while in school what did you achieve while in school you understand what i'm saying people must be able to look into your background and look at your That's achievements excellent. Those are the things that will propel you that will, in fact sometimes they will have no choice but to just push you forward for instance, look at Lagos now. Successfully, Apart who left the place, he's been able to put in place people that, I mean, even the most ardent critic, uh, critic of Tinubu will give kudos to him on Fashala and Ambodina. He's been able to pick quality success. Now, let's look at these um, uh, selfish leaders that you've talked about and then the institution from your experience. Now, is it that we also have, well, let me use the word selfish institution, uh, he should have been weak institution, we should have checkmated this selfish uh, you're just uh, coming back you're just coming back to the point now and that's what i believe we should be discussing the major challenge of nigeria is the fact that nigeria remains a young democracy a democracy goes beyond voting every four four years democracy is sustained by institutions look at what is happening in the u.s we don't have that in nigeria you have a situation where the fbi is refusing to take instruction from a sitting president if that should happen in nigeria within 24 hours that person is gone even if trump should manage to sack the head of the fbi as long as that institution believes that what he's doing is wrong they will not do what he had them to do we don't have democracy is sustained by a strong judiciary independent a strong and vibrant mass media independent as well then civil society organizations in nigeria you have two for one couple of civil society organizations they just pay the leadership some money they will go and print posters, print banners and then start demonstrating and protesting over whatever you see leaders of civil societies who live in lekki live in magodo and other places and you try to look at their source of income where did they make money from from the same political leader that they ought to be criticizing that doesn't happen abroad money for civil society programs come from donations from ordinary people across the but where do they get their own money from so we, we have weak institutions that should sustain democracy in nigeria once those institutions are strong because the mistake we keep on making is that we believe that we need a strong leader we need a, 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 an incorruptible leader no it is not leaders per se that makes a society fine you need those leaders but without the institutions for instance you have an incorruptible leader and you have rogues in the national assembly what is that person going to do you have drug barons in the national assembly right now you have four one nine and so on what is Buhari going to do? Is the national, if the National Assembly does not pass its list of ministers, he can't appoint them now. It's not possible. If there are policies he wants to implement and the National Assembly is against it, because second of story. But if those institutions have been strong, normally a governor was not convicted, a governor was acquitted here. And the same person was convicted in the UK. Our judiciary is weak. How do we then get this institution? How do we make that? Because what we have now, which you I'm sure will also have noticed um, in your time in government is these leaders, the, those who superintend over them, have the ability to break the institutions and make them suit their own purpose. So let, let me tell you something, my brother. The, the thing is, for me, the, there is a group I used to belong to, I think shortly after I left secondary school in the uh, 80s. We call it Moral Rearmament Movement. 
their main slogan it's it is better to light a candle than to cross the darkness my own advice is that to every nigerian wherever you find yourself do the right thing you might be sacked you might be kicked out you might be discriminated against you understand but do the right thing the problem we have is that in most cases those who know the right things and they feel they should do them they are scared of their tomorrow they don't want to be sad who oh, have children at home i have to feed them how to pay their school fees i have a wife at home how to feed them how to pay their school fees leaders might be messing up but what about those around them what about those they have appointed towards the iraqi war two ministers resigned two cabinet ministers resigned in the uk now and they told Tony Blair to his face what you are doing is wrong i've not seen that happen here now that the commissioner will resign from cabinet because he disagrees with what the government is saying or a minister will resign because he disagrees with what the president is saying it is those things that will straight if, if we have that across board it is those kind of things that will encourage others in these situations we are talking about you understand like the guy that was found with three billion in his house for god's sake he's got staff now but you can say well if those ones talk some people will collect their own among those sent to arrest but for god's sake do yours God is seeing you. You understand? If your effort is not noted now, it will still be noted. And that takes me back to 1983. I always pray for that man. But till date, the Nigerian police has never, never recognized the man's effort. He was an inspector of police then. I was still in secondary school. During the general elections in Nigeria, he was an inspector. His colleagues wanted to snatch a ballot box somewhere in the back. And he stood his ground. He was dismissed. He stood his ground. He refused. He didn't allow them to steal the ballot box along with the thugs that came. That's a quality Nigerian. Fine, his efforts may not have been appreciated. But for God's sake, he has satisfied his conscience. There will still be people like him remaining in the police. They may not be enough to change but, the system. Well, when we have too many of Too many bad examples. ones. Yes. yes. And but then no, it weakens No the... matter how dark the darkness is, no matter how black it is, there is no way there won't be a semblance of light somewhere. What those lights need to do is just to continue shining, no matter the problems. Sooner or later, an aggregation of light will chase away the darkness. Uh, it won't come they, in a day. They, let, let me ask you this um, again. Um, this is your first time on radio, yeah. and a lot of those who know you heard about you read uh, some of your uh, stories who want to ask uh, this uh, question. How do you want to describe your own experience coupled with all this your submission while in government? You see, if anyone had told me I'll be in government at any time or even run for elected position, I would, I would just describe the person as a fool. I mean, but like I said, at some point you just feel that you can't just stay out there criticizing what they are doing um, all the time, coming and make a change. In my own little way, one, I mean, I'm not a saint, I always tell my friends. The I'll just share one or two examples. The first day I resumed as chief press secretary to the governor, I got to my office, and uh, normally I'm coming from, I mean, I was coming from the country, that's my background. And Tibajibola Mushola has something there. Every staff has a job description. So that if somebody leaves suddenly and you are asked to go and replace that person, there's a file for you. That's what the person has been doing. That's what you are supposed to be doing. I ask everybody to write their job description and I was shocked. I just called the, I went to the head of service and I told him, look, this is what I supposed to my requirements here. <laughs> I don't want, I know, I know. The opposite, the other, I said, no, yeah, okay. the thing is, as a journalist, I always criticize wastage in government. I cannot allow this one. If you can put them with a bed in my office, no, I won't allow it. You have to be collecting salary for nothing. I insisted. Initially, he refused, but later, I think, I don't, I can't remember I spoke to the government about it. But those people have to leave my office. I told them I don't want them. In fact, it's only recently one of them, a lady, <laughs> began talking to me because for long, even if I greeted that she won't answer me. And to me, it's not that I hated them or something. I just felt that things have to be done the right way. I'll give another example. When I was appointed director of organization, PDP Ogun said in uh, December 2004, before I took the appointment, I told the governor and the party leader then that, look, there must be programs that you want to sell to the people. The summary of it. If you go to the PDP secretariat today, what I gave them and what I insisted on, you will see it like a plate on that wall. The five 
cardinal programs of the PDP, I mean five pillars of the PDP of Museko. What, what I try to do in my own little way is that whatever one has preached directly or indirectly before, if you are not able to do it when you are in that position, for God's sake, you are a fool. You are not um, a leader, so to say. They are just out there for what you are going to get. And when it got to the point of living, a lot of people told me that I was stupid living government. Whatever has happened, you have to stay there. No, I can't stomach it anymore. I got to leave. And that's what I left. What couldn't you stomach? <laughs> <laughs> no, lots of things that are happening. I mean, like I, I was I was almost assassinated. And I mean, yeah, I, that something was that happened before. No, 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 several, several, several things, several things happened because at some point, like I told you earlier, to me, whatever anybody might say, the first time of being a Daniel, super, but immediately got in the second time, the circle fans took over and I just felt, look, I've had it, I can't be part of it. Of course, pressures came here and there, stay, 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 until that incident happened. I knew it was going to happen the year before it happened. I was making arrangements to leave the country with my family, but that arrangement did not work out. So it didn't happen, it gave me an opportunity to finally say, look, it's over. I what is the it. thing? That's to be question. No, that's that's what I told you now that see, you were talking about leaders. That's the beginning of this program. You're talking about yes, leaders yes. and leadership in Nigeria. That the, the challenge with a lot of our leaders is that somewhere along the line, they get surrounded by psychophants who okay. mislead them. For, and like I told you, you look at the first four years of Wenger Daniel in this state, you can't tell me that I didn't perform. But beginning from the second term, it derailed because the psychophants took over, the priests took over, and the man started acting like he was some kind of god. Because initially, you sit down in a meeting with Daniel, no god, no, no, whatever, nothing. You say your mind, it's not as if you are going to challenge him or command him or whatever, but he will listen to everybody and he would summarize all the ideas and that. Well, I mean, he would implement the ones he feels he has implemented. I mean, immediately after the second term, shut out everybody. Just the psychophants who felt. Well, when you say psychophants, uh, well, they, um, I'd like you to clarify this. If I'm close to you, yeah. naturally, um, you'll be closer to some people than to some yeah. before you become, let's say, the governor, before he became the governor. Or yeah. So you won't expect me not to give my ears so more. It's not a question of giving of your ears more. See, mine is that if you are derailing, you are my friend, you are my colleague. You are derailing. You are doing things you are not supposed to do. And I'm not able to confront you and tell you that what... Okay, let me just share another example. When I was director of organization, something happened in Delta State. Ibori was still governor of Delta State. And um, the governor just called me. We had a congress. You know, um, there is this congress to replace uh, ESCO members of the party, put in new ones, and so on. We had World Congress. We had Local Government Congress. Then we had the state uh, congress. I think Chief Georgie Fadairo was being brought in then as the state yeah. chairman of the party. The governor called me. I went to the government house. Wale, you guys should go and make arrangements. I'm coming to swear in the chairman tomorrow. I said, oh, God. A, a son cannot do the christening of the father. Now. How can you come and swear in the... I mean, that's me. You, you, you understand? And he said, no. Good enough. In the paper that morning, it was as if God just arranged it that way. The National Secretariat of the PDP has just queried the Delta State PDP for allowing um, Ibori to swear in the state chapter of the party, the ESCO, there. So I, I showed him the, the thing. So that, that idea was shelved. He did it because if not, he would have done what Ibori did. Uh, shortly before then, in my local government, that's after the Congress in my own local government. I'm from Ijebu's local government. Engineer in the the job was still council chairman. I had an invitation I should come to Ogbere that swearing in of uh, the party chairman was going to happen. I got there and the council chairman got up that he wanted to swear in. And I told him the same thing. A son cannot do the baptism of the father. It's not possible. The party gave birth to you as council chairman. And he was kind of, I said, no, as the director of organization of the party, it won't happen. So what we now agreed as a compromise was that the immediate past uh, chairman should come and symbolically hand over to the new one. A lot of people will not be able to do that because talk to a guy like that, confront a guy. No, that's what a guy wants to do. That, and that's what I'm calling psychophancy. That's what I describe as psychophancy. When you see something wrong, you need to say it. it is, you are not commanding him. You just, because to me, as a Yoruba, I'm a Muslim, but I always describe myself as a Yoruba Muslim. I'm a Yoruba first 
Muslim. I mean, I have to do it. I say Yoruba Muslim. The thing is, the person you are working for has an elder. If he does not know, his elder will know. And his elder will confirm that you are doing what is right for him or her. You understand what I'm saying? Beyond what people around are telling that person. Because the elder is a spirit who sees all. He knows your heart. He knows everything. He can see beyond what we humans cannot see. You understand what I'm talking about? So when you are not able to boldly confront your principal, you're not challenging him. You're not challenging his authority. You, you just need to tell him. The, the final decision is his own. But you don't keep it inside of you because of fear of losing your job or because of fear of losing your closeness to him. That's me. I give it to you as it is. You take it or leave it, that's your, that's your problem. Okay, now we, we often say um, power belongs to the people. And, uh, you know, Vox, uh, uh, properly Vox, the, the voice of, uh, of the people is the voice of God. But it seems that in this climate, <laughs> all that is not uh, really uh, the, that the is also not true. That is also not true. Because the rigged elections? The, 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 that's, that's, that's the point I'm no, having. No, no, that's, you, that's not you, true. Truly, can you say that power belongs to the Nigerian people? Power belongs to the Nigerian people. Let me just use have it. They, okay, if you believe so, yeah. have the people come to understand that that power belongs to them? But that's they to that's another issue entirely. The thing is, a lot of people say the rigged election, and they say power belongs to the people. They are robbing the people this and that. My brother, you cannot read where you are not popular. If you are not popular somewhere, you can't read. No matter the amount of arms and ammunition you have, the people will revolt against you and you will lose face. It's not possible. APC is in government at the federal now. Why do APC clear the elections in rivers? If you are not popular, you can't read. No matter the I army, mean, the Pashum states, look at what happened there now. If you are not popular, no matter the arms and ammunition you deploy, for God's sake, you cannot win. It's not possible. I'm not saying rigging is not possible. Rigging is done. You just do rigging as in. Uh, you have to score 50 in an exam and you have 49.5 so by padding one to make it a uh, 50 yeah, no even if it's slightly above 50 because if it's 50 somebody can say go there and remove uh, point yeah, one so. and make it back under 50 you have to do it a bit above average that's what happens in rigging now you can't regular you are not popular it's still the people at the end of the day all right, uh, we have to go on a break now for the national news at 10. After the national news, we will come back and continue. Citizens uh, Forum. Wanda Dayo is our guest this morning, publisher of, of Uru Times, and uh, the former chief secretary to former governor of the state, Otomo Gregor Daniel, and former director of organization of the PDP. He will be back. Stay with us. Proxy 21.9 FM here in the city of Abekuta Citizens Forum this morning. I'm um, interested so far looking at the question of leadership, governance, and we, yes, the people itself, the correlation. And we have uh, with us the former chief press secretary to former governor, Otubag Benga Daniel, former director of the organization of the People's Democratic Party, and above all, yes, a journalist and editor, um, Wale. All right, um, we will open the telephone lines for you to be a part of it. Ask any questions, comments, provided you stay within the rules of the game. But before then, um, uh, well, again, I, I'm going to go back to the people and the institution itself. Um, from your submission, you've identified psychopathy, selfish leadership as part of the problems. How can the people come in now and perhaps uh, retrieve this problem? Like I said before, it is not a question of the people coming in. The people cannot come in because on the average, people will not move on their own. You need God-chosen people, spirit-led people, you know, people who have the interests of their community at, at heart. It is not everybody that will do that. It is not everybody that is gifted to do that. It's a few people. Who are usually give that to do that they are the one that will galvanize the people into action they are the one that will mobilize the people into action such people are few in society it's not everybody not everybody wants to go the average person just wants to go to his farm go to his business but ah, can you come what's my business with that one no. have something to eat and drink exactly i want to take care of my children i want to take care of my husband i want to take care of my wife that is what the average person is just concerned about they can complain no, from now till tomorrow but for them to do that which you call positive action they will never do it but it is these few people that can stand. It's like what the Christians call standing in the gap in prayers. They are the ones that will stand in the gap 
for the people and galvanize them into action. It is these people you should be addressing the question to what they need to do. What they need to do basically is to mobilize. Now, look for like minds across places and get into a political party. Because for me, it's too late to register any party. Now, if you register any party now, then you're not looking at the 2019 elections. You are looking at the 2023 um, elections. But if you are looking at 2019 elections, if in fact, this is the best time to start mobilizing. Get people of like minds, but start, not, not start from Lagos. A lot of people sit down in Lagos and Abelkuta. They'll be talking a lot of uh, crap in the media, blowing grammar and all those things. They can even go on Facebook and Twitter, be writing all they need to write. For God's sake, go back to your villages. Start from your wards. Start from your local government. Start from your senatorial district. From there, you move. And there are even some people who believe in these um, vague, or will I say they are naive, and Nigerian thing. You that you are not able to have any serious influence in your thing. You are talking about changing Nigeria. You cannot change Nigeria to go. You have to start from your base. You have to start from somewhere. And that's why I mentioned start from your world, start from your local government, start from your state. So if you are able to hold your state, then for God's sake, from there you can you can spread out. It's like a guerrilla warfare. You want to start a guerrilla warfare, you just don't storm the capital. You have to start from somewhere hidden in the bush, start gradually and move to the move to the capital. Okay. Uh, let, so, sorry, Toby, let, let me ask you this question. I noted one of your statements because of uh, the program first half. Um, you are a Yoruba Muslim. Yes. You further explain what Yoruba Muslim means. Now, in this quest for um, somebody who can hold the Project Nigeria at all level, um, the Africa meet. You can we apply it? The what uh, some people call the African insurance. Can we apply it? Come here, or so people will say the governor has been charmed. No, 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 no. Does that work out uh, in government? Uh, from experience? No, how I, I, I don't, I don't understand. What and that's some there. people. Um, how do they call it? Okay, let me use the common uh, remote control. Yeah. The governor yeah. or the leaders once they are there and therefore. No, I don't they only listen to them and then no 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 I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't I don't believe in that. What you should realize is that whoever is there, who is Muslim or Christians, they too they go out now, they saw themselves out spiritually. If they were doing it before now, they are even in a better position to do it because they have more money to offer to those to those spiritualists. So was that prevalent in the government you said? Of course not, Abba. It's not prevalent in society. If it is Abuja said after a batch of that, so many cows and so on were so There's no way. Is that why they misnamed you, Babalao? No, 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 that's not why. But it was Ghani Adams who gave me the name of Babalao. Babalao was not my name in the crusade here. It was Ghani Adams, the leader of the office, who gave me the name of Babalao. And he has his own reason for that. The name did not originate here. A lot of people naively believe the name originated from the crusade. No. It was Ghani Adams who originated here. Far, far, way, way, way back. Even long before I came to the crusade. Were you also part of any kind of oath swearing during the. No, people people usually are moving away from the question of leadership. No, no, you 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 may not you may delved into spiritualism, African mythism, and all. Was that prevalent? No, no, no. I I I know that a a lot of people took oaths while being that and was there because I mean initially it was Shagam. Later, the team moved to Osasa. There's a guy that they call him Akwina. Uh, the thing was done in the shrine there, but it was Shagam. But when the thing was getting too much too public, now the thing was uh, moved to, to Shagam. But me, I, I, I didn't because I mean, there are some levels. Even right now, oaths are still being taken out in some political parties. I'm aware of that. Mm. All right. Now, that. now, before we throw police through lines, uh, one debate which is already uh, generating momentum, and gathering momentum, is about Open West project. Yeah. Um, uh, I love the, this. The, 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 hold on, hold on, I love. I know you are interested in. No, this. no I'm not. In the <laughs> actual, I'm not a politician. <laughs> okay, now uh, uh, there are three. There, there are three zones. Um, no, West, four. Four zones. Yeah. Uh, really, but there are three senatorial districts. Yeah. So that causes a uh, go east or the west or the uh, so central. central. Then you have four zones. You have a Jebu, you have a Remo, Remo, you have a Emma, and then Yewa. But even in Yewa, the people also are divided because there is Yewa and there is Awoshi. 
All right, and so that is you also have the, you have your horizon. Uh, all right, so you see people saying, okay, what is your project? What about Awori? Do you understand? But the, let's call them Yewa. They believe that it is their turn to become governor in 2019. But the Jebus believe that it's nothing like uh, four zones. So what you have is either East and either the Embas or the Jebus, uh, which even the Remos will disagree with. So they believe that Embas and Baudo, which is Embado, have had their short eight years. So it should naturally go back to the how how do you react to all this? No, but, but basically you have to understand um, you have to understand something. Ogun said the way we were there were basically two divisions: the Eba division and the Jebu division. Um, later, Remo came in, and you have a, a Bado later. The way things have been going here is like between northern Nigeria and southern Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. The fact that a Yoruba man in the person of a passenger was president, uh, immediately he finished his eight years, that does not mean an evil man away from the East will okay. automatically come in. The thing has to be a ding dong between northern and southern Nigeria. And that is what the Jebus are saying. That once uh, Senator Bikula Musu wish from the Egba side of the right here finishes, then before he can go to the Ebado, the ding dong must return down there. So that since uh, Benga Daniel, I think Benga Daniel was from Remo. The ding dong should go to yeah, yeah, because yeah. ordinarily, ordinarily, if proper procedure have been followed in this informal arrangement, so the Ibrahim also should not have come on board because Chief Oshaba, who is a bar, has, has, just, has just left. And um, I mean, normally, if he's not going to Jebu, he should have been a Yoruba worried person who should have been there. That's the argument. But to go deeper into the problem, I think the West people are making a lot of mistakes, and I think their strategies should go back to the drawing board. There's a lot of noise about uh, the West governor in 2019. I wonder if that person is going to govern Ogun West State. If the person is not going to govern Ogun West State, then for God's sake, you are alienating a lot of people from the project. From the project, because you are chatting, Awori governor, you are governor, here and there. I, I'm not aware there is an Awori state or there is a Yewa state. What we have is open state. So if it is open state, the way you are going about it is a very, very wrong one. And they should learn from the East. Because uh, a few years back, the Igbos were also agitating for an Igbo president, Igbo president. What happened? They lost her because they alienated a lot of uh, credible people who should have uh, joined the yeah, even, this even the hero, Juku contested. They didn't yes, I mean, no, the, the, the reality is that you can win in your, in your area, but the others will not follow you. You, you, you have to carry others along. And in doing that, you have to deploy a pan open state uh, platform in, in, in doing that, which they are not doing in their messages. Th their messages is like you, you, are, you are throwing water at something and the thing is coming back at you. But you believe that you are pouring out a lot of water. Meanwhile, you are just wasting your, your water. Their, their messages are getting uh, negative vibes in places where it should have been positive. So I think it's a wrong uh, this in the 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 strategy. The, so let, let me get this clear for you uh, from you. You do not think um, people should basically lightly massively support the uh, Ogo West zone to produce the candidate. I'm, I'm I'm not saying that. I'm not I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is that in doing it, in projecting somebody no or some everybody. some person, no, no, I don't believe it should be thrown open to everybody. That's why I use the example of Nigeria. The presidency of Nigeria is not thrown open to everybody. Normally, it's an unwritten agreement. It's an informal arrangement. Something that is not in our constitution. Something that is not in any law anywhere. That should be the tone of somewhere. You understand? But there, there is a magazine a young friend just produced, Open West News, and I was shocked. While uh, while while you talk with the former commissioner for works. I was shocked that he could even say that, but I was glad because some of us have been saying it and a lot of people don't believe us, that there are four divisions. And while you said it, that sometimes in 2002, they went to meet President Abbas the then he was still president in the Bila, and that they were angling for it, that it's the turn of the West here and there. And Abbas was telling them that, well, uh, what if we find, and Ijebu has done it before, and Egba has been there. Uh, but uh, you know, you would have not done it. But Remo too, they have not done it. What if a Remo get a credible Remo person? So while you said 
in a way, they got the message that Obasanjo wanted to support Remo. So if we are now saying there is no fourth division, how come as at 2002, Obasanjo mentioned those four divisions? You don't understand what I'm saying. So if the Jabus are, I mean, are challenging you on the thing, it, it should not be, how many times have you seen an Ijabu candidate, or which Ijabu aspirant have you seen using a campaign slogan of Ijabu Lokon? to push his, uh, his campaign. How many? How many times have you seen that? Have you seen that anywhere? I've not seen it. I've not even seen you. I look over. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. That okay. the, whoever is packaging their campaign, uh, I won't say I won't say they are not professionals, but they should go to the masters and then from there. <laughs> All right. Uh, at this juncture, we must uh, permit you to be a part of it. Let's get your own thought questions for Wale Adida, former Chief Secretary, former Director of Organization of the People's Democratic Party, and a journalist editor. Um, please, uh, first, the route, you know it. Uh, we won't uh, permit with you to go beyond that two minutes mark, and there will be no insult, abuse on any individual or personality as we make your comment. Don't come out with claims that you cannot substantiate. You don't have to agree with the position of the other person, yes, you have your opinion, but just drop your own position convincingly without abusing the other position. Uh, please, let's be guided. All right, the, the, the thing is, um, I was talking about doing things the wrong way and people expecting the right way. It's normal because, like I said, the average person, they don't, it's not as if they don't know what to do, they know what to do. They just like the data to draw on the average. Most people are not selfless. Most people are selfish. They only look out for themselves alone. But the few people are there in the society that God has placed there, or circumstances have placed there. Those are the ones that will galvanize people to do the right things and do things in a way. I mean, for God's sake, uh, Taisho Larry was not a uh, pastor because uh, for Mr. Tunde Malalu, who was talking about social power and political, whatever, whatever. Actually, he was not a pastor, he was not a Muslim, he was not a Christian. I mean, he didn't believe in anything, anything. he was an atheist uh, before he died. But for God's sake, several of the things he did right from his youth till he died. Fantastic things that you say, oh, this man must be a, must have been an SU or a Tablik or something like that. He was, he was, not, he was not religious in, in, in any way. So for me, the two questions uh, go, go together. We still need the crop of people that have been appointed for this generation by God or by circumstances for them to come together and do the right thing so that we can get the right results, not just in Ogun State, but in Nigeria itself. And I want to contest uh, with uh, Malawi that um, source of power of political leaders determines uh, what they do. Exactly. No, that's not necessarily so. For God's sake, Saul was an anointed uh, man of God, was anointed, but he derailed somewhere along the, the way. His power was from. Um, God now, that is the God of the, the Bible. And uh, he was talking about who taking one in the Abolical and so on. I, I beg to disagree with that. The fact that you are, uh, you are not a traditionalist uh, does not mean you should uh, take a derogatory sounds as uh, a traditional religion. Uh, with due respect to you, just PM me a minute. <clears throat> I was trying to explain to some friends on Facebook a few days back. When Fidel Castro became the, pre uh, the leader of Cuba, the president of Cuba, and they were celebrating the, the, the revolution, uh, what in Yoruba and what we call a uh, Yerefum landed on the shoulders, and the people are separate because majority of them are traditional. Ah, I want you to support the name. But the fact is, when John the Baptist baptized Jesus Christ, what happened? The same Yerefum uh, landed on the head of Christ, and the voice from heaven came, This is my oh. son in whom I went please. Um, some years, in fact, several years before the prophet Muhammad was born, in Yoruba land there is a saying, Obatu Mamirin so teacher. But for God's sake, that is not true. That king normally rides an elephant to battle. There's a chapter in the Quran, I think Surat al Fil, something like that. The king wanted to go and destroy the Kaaba, which is the holy uh, shrine in Mecca. The Meccans ran away and they begged him not to kill their children and them. They ran away. All of them ran away. And the king entered Mecca. As he was making for the Kaaba, black birds from nowhere came and attacked him and his army, plucking their eyes, throwing hot stones at them. You have the food and you are telling me that somebody diabolical. It depends on your level of experience, the depth of your knowledge, where you have been to. In my book, Intersection of the Faith, you see some of these things that if you say you are a Christian, you are a Muslim, 
and you are abusing a traditionalist, you don't know much about your religion, you should go and research uh, deeper. Right, so, right, oath is oath, whether Christian or Muslim or Christian or traditionalist. So, all these things cut across. Yes. And, and that's just it. I know Emeka was, uh, was. I think Emeka's own has to do more with uh, his, 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 his area. I, I, I disagree with Emeka that the Igbos have not been become president because they have just five states. We have six states in Yoruba land now. And uh, to me, you can calculate rivers as part of uh, Igbo land. And to a large extent, you have the Igbos too in Delta State, almost half of the uh, Delta State. Yeah. In fact, the current governor of Delta State is, is an Igbo from. Uh, from, from the other. So for me, I don't think uh, it, it is that. I think it still has a lot to do with the carryover from the Civil War, from the Civil War era. That's my own uh, belief. That All right. Uh, people don't feel fully integrated. Uh, okay, we we'll continue with the calls. Who is there? Good morning. Okay, you can call back. That's a drop call. Good morning. No. Yes, yes, sir. Good, good morning. morning. Yes. Thank you for Thank you. calling, Tango. Now, this one from Kalaoli Joseph says, From your analysis, I can see you don't believe in God for a reason. Uh, please, uh, will it be right for a leader in Lagos to determine who will be the governor in the state in 2019? Kalaoli Joseph. Kalaoli Joseph sent in that one. Okay, now let's go to the tweets. Uh, May of God says, um, Good morning, Mr. Dylan Toby. Good morning. Uh, and also our guest, you are mostly welcome. My opinion may seem different from yours, but I guess talked on uh, no, that no one should empower with the youth. Does that mean that youth have no leadership capabilities or skills? And do we say the agent should continue to be dominant and push us into the ditch? More so, may I ask that the trend Nigeria is on now is a trend to permit the agent rulership based on Mr. Wally's opening speech, pertaining to selfless and selfish leaders. I think you have been saying these times with that number that we, we leaders of nowadays are now get are not getting prepared for the leadership position we are admiring and our motive for wanting to be a leader is not for contributing our immense and unbiased quota, but rather to enrich our pockets, which is why we are having a struggling and downcasted leadership uh, and position. That's at Mayor of God. All right, uh, Zugi tweeted this. I'm not surprised how well educated. Uh, is it to know? Okay, I think that's uh, talking about uh, Okoro Chars earlier. He sent in this one about Okoro Chars choosing and saying nobody above 50 should become governor. John Adiolu says, I disagree with Mr. Abedayo. Selfish leaders is the same as bad leaders. Uh, GEJ also said, no corrupt leaders, just thieves. It's about Oyembo Palava. <laughs> Zuki says, where exactly in power do we have young people and how has that contributed to national development? Uh, John Adioli says, no argument about this. We simply have bad leaders. Call it any grammar. Nigeria is suffering because of inefficiency in leadership. Uh, leadership, can, le leadership skill is not by PhD. It's simply putting people first in every of your actions. We have capitalists as leaders and they just want money. The society can only develop on the administration of law and people-oriented policies. Our leaders are simply businessmen wanting profit. We need leaders with outstanding maturity, whose wealth is not measured in cash and cars, but in the welfare and love of their people. We followers are un undoubtedly shallow-minded and undeveloped, but leaders are put there to control the people and ensure orderliness. John Adielu sent in those tweets. Abiodun he says, Mr. Wally has just said the truth about the administration of OGD. He's a good man, and I know that for sure. Please ask him why he went to SDP, and what about the party now? Uh, nice submission by Babala Wu, but I want him to tell us the truth about the uh, problem he has with OGD then. Uh, then, what is his ambition? Okay, this is Abiodun Alani from 2nd February, reminding you of... Uh, uh, okay, Abbe Fagumi says, let's Ogun State be united and accept anybody which God sent to us to rule Ogun State. Promise made is promise kept. Uh, the voice of your agenda can be achieved through a single body in any political party. Proud to be a Yewa indigenous. They, since the creation of Ogun State, uh, Ogun State, um, I haven't heard in the news that uh, Yewa indigenous have ruled the state 
for months. We need one voice on this. Okay. That's Abbe Fabio. Okay, let's get some reactions. Loads, loads of them. But, but basically, in, in summary, uh, Taiwan was talking about poor uh, leadership is a problem of Nigeria. He said he agrees with uh, the former president. But like I said, I will insist that it's not a question of poor leadership. It's a question of selfish leaders. A lot of our leaders, they are richly endowed upstairs. It's only that, uh, like the Yorubas will say, in Kanto Kujaki, Mogbo. I mean, like I said, you can't say Jonathan did not have a PhD. I'm sure he will have learned his lesson by now. I mean, Jaradua shouldn't have died in, in office. He should have resigned, left to me. Because once you know that your capability and given the kind of sickness you have, I mean, he was an investing lecturer. So why must he allow people to insist that he should remain with president when you know that your health is not, I mean, cannot carry the, the job? You can't call him a poor leader by by any, any, any standard. And uh, if you are talking about poor leadership, when you say your pastor Joe himself was poor for trying to go for a short term, I mean, it's not a question, it's what everybody wants for themselves, which is uh, which is basically uh, wrong. Laurie Jaji said most people want to serve, don't have a godfather. For God's sake, fine, godfathers can make a lot of people. But there is one thing I always tell young people, the cream will always ride to the top. I don't know, uh, if you drink beer, you pour beer in a cup, the foam will start from the bottom, but at some point it will rise to the top. If you are good in what you are doing, there's no way anybody can keep you down. Not Godfather, not anybody. You might be there for some time, but sooner or later you rise to the top. Out of nowhere, some people will recognize you for who you are, unless you are not consistent in what you are doing. David was anointed as a small shepherd now, but he didn't become a king the same day. It took him several years before he got to where God has ordained him for. Um, what's his name? Joseph. He had a dream several years before he became the Prime Minister of Egypt. Just keep doing what you are doing. Let it be known to the people. Like the Bible says, don't hide your light under the bushel. Whatever you are doing, let it be known wherever you are doing it. Sooner or later, all those who are opposed to you, like uh, Joseph's brothers, they will come to bow down at your feet. Even the so-called um, Godfather. So I don't believe that you, you need these people per se. It is either they themselves will come, because, uh, sorry for quoting the Bible too much this morning, <laughs> but it says that the heart of the king is in his hands, and he directed wheresoever he wills like the course yes. of the river. Once God has said, you are the one, I mean, at the end of the day, it is they themselves who come and take you. I've never seen or heard about it in history. Yorubas will say, alone, Mr. King John, you tell me. Of course, me, while I did that, I don't say amen to such prayers, because why? Uh, Moses, theology that by now, Moses lived in the house of his enemy, and those who are saying amen to such prayers, they have never read Psalm 24. The earth and the fullness belong to God. So if the earth and the fullness belong to my father, for God's sake, who is my father that has something? He's just holding it in trust for me. So if you are good and God has ordained you for something, you know you have the guilt, the skills for this position. So God said, just keep on doing what you are doing wherever you find yourself. Sooner or later. I mean, his proclamation will come. His word will never fall to the ground without being the fulfilled. That's my take anyway. As because, like I said, I'm a Yoruba Muslim. I'm not opposed to any of these things. I'm spiritual, like Professor Olesha Inka said. I'm not a religious person. I mean, I'm very, very spiritual. That's mine. Somebody was talking about uh, why I went to SAP. Of course, uh, you know, I was had disagreements with the incumbent governor. We had to follow Chiwachowa to... SDP. The state of the party is now, everything is in a flux uh, right now. APC, PDP, all of them, everything is in a, is in a flux. Before things stabilize and anyone knows where they are, should be something close to maybe December this year or sometimes uh, next, next, next year. Because some might argue that, oh, there's no problem like PDP and APC. That is not true. If you listen to what uh, the legacy governor said yesterday, Aki Omi Ambode, you know that there is serious crisis in APC because he said, the Minister of Works, mm. Fashila is frustrating him from doing some road leading to the International Airport. Mm. And mind you, Fashila was the immediate uh, governor in Lagos, frustrating the guy who was taking over from, and both of them are in the same party, party the same, I mean, mm. ruling party. It shows you that uh, there are some war. The, 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 recent some meeting, war. Uh, uh, the, uh, the recent meeting, the chairman of the party had with the governors, he mentioned crisis in those. Uh -huh. in so those so the, the thing is, the state of the parties here is not different from what you have. Uh, I mean, in Ogun State, it's not different from what you have um, elsewhere. Uh, the problem with OGD, <clears throat> there's no problem with uh, OGD. <laughs> we'll talk about that later because 
Yeah, we don't have much time. We don't have much time here. But just keep up with my audience on Facebook. I write some of these things on, on my Facebook wall as well. I'm Wally Adidai on Facebook. You can always check out some of these things on, on Facebook. But in summary, we're still talking about leadership. When Baba said poor leadership, I still insist that it is the caliber of persons going there, the caliber of people who find themselves there and their interests. Is it Nigeria they really want to serve or their friends, their families and themselves? If they really want to serve Nigeria, just like the soldiers going to war, you will not mind dying there in the field of service so that you accomplish your purpose. The soldier can ordinarily run away from battle. Why should I go on Facebook and call some people? Let me go and hide somewhere. After all, I'll say maybe I managed to escape. It should be the same thing with our leaders. If ordinary soldiers can lay down their lives in the service of their fatherland, I don't see what it would cost a governor, a local government chairman, or a president to do that which is right on the altar of. I, I want because like somebody mentioned the other time that when the previous government uh, had done the project the next one will either cancel it or run away from it for god's sake if the project is meant for the people whatever agreement is coming out of the new one that you are making arrangements with, with the contractor or you you let that one be secondary and do what is right for the people i mean while you can still collect the same demo now from the old contractor and you only need to negotiate it may not up to it may not be up to what the old guy um collected but if it is about service to the people it's like to me because i'll still insist not poor leadership. What we have are just selfish leaders. It's not a question of being Sorry, poor. Quickly, uh, okay. we are Let's add uh, more tweets. Uh, Jim Akeron says, quite an age, Mr. Adedayo. I hope you won't renounce your faith someday and claim you've seen the light. Uh, do you promise me that? Okay. Oluwashi Ogumbola says, let it be known that leaders take the cross of uh, the followers. No Nigerian leader has done this. Save little out of many lack of godly leaders in Nigeria has brought us thus far. But I still hope Nigeria will get out of uh, this mess we find ourselves. Um, Gafa Olushogun says, uh, leadership should be a call to service and leaders should be the one, should be the number one servant rather in Nigeria. The reverse is the case. Uh, Jim Akira is asking this question once again. Do you support that the governorship of Ogun State goes to Ogun West in 2019, Mr. Didayo? Uh, Soli Ibrahim says, God bless you for this program. Uh, thank you. Uh, Aspirin MD says, Are we sure Mr. Wale Adida is a Muslim? He's master of the Bible. It's amazing. Okay. Yamida Vinci says, I find it hard to fault any of the submission of Wale Adida. Uh, he's almost seducing me to join politics. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, okay. Because uh, we have uh, to go. Okay. Uh, no, give no, 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 just on this open West, uh, something. For now, because uh, I'm a part-time politician too, uh, to support Ogun West, uh, whoever is from you are worried. For me, I think we're premature at this point. But the thing is to have the ground rules. But, and my advice to them, they just never campaign for president now. They were just doing their thing under the table. And look at what happened when Jonathan became president. The Igbos have been campaigning for it, I mean, for, since 1999. And they've never got it. So to me, like I said earlier, those who are campaigning for an open West person to emerge as the governor of the state in 2019, they need to go back to the drawing board and get the assistance of quality hands, you know, to package their, their, their campaign. There's too much noise about governor of Ogun West, governor of Iwawori. And like I said, I've not seen any Ogun West state in Nigeria. I don't think they've created another state that is Iwawori state. Uh, uh, quickly, uh, while before we go, one word. Uh, you have given your position that they can, we cannot hand over power to the youth. Can we then peg the age of those who become uh, the leader as governor or president? Say, no, once you are 60, you cannot aspire, once you are 70. I, 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 disa I disagree. I disagree 100% with that. I disagree. You, you don't peg age for kings now. That's undemocratic. You be denied that once they have the right to vote, why won't they have the right to contest? But do you also agree that uh, some kind of uh, age group comes with all kind of uh, health challenges like Actually, you are having? Yes. With President Wahoo, you are having now, uh, who is your official age is 75. I disagree with you 100%. With due respect to former President Lisha Kubasan, you try that old man with an 18 year old girl and see what will happen. Okay. Forget about age. I think that's a convenient thing. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for her invitation. Um, Mali Adedayo, it's wonderful having you.
Thank you very much. Uh, this morning. Uh, we also appreciate all those who were able to call too and those who uh, actually sent in their contributions uh, via uh, the short code. We are sorry if we were not able to uh, read out some of the messages. Uh, they had some little network challenge uh, uh, with the short code. So we are sorry uh, in case we, but we, 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 I promise that tomorrow on the open day uh, they, they will do justice to that on the open day so that your messages will not be left hanging. Those who sent in tweet, we appreciate you too. And of course, uh, those uh, who commented on our Facebook. Okay, this, com this message just came in on our Facebook uh, post. Uh, it's, it's my first encounter with, uh, it is my first encounter with what I did uh, this morning. And it has, uh, it has been able to warm my heart uh, with the writing of this defiant and courageous president. And the first and foremost problem with Nigeria is the 1999 military constitution we are running the country with. So many incidents has happened recently which points directly to the deliberate loopholes in the constitution as the major problem hindering our development. Mm. All right, that just came in now from Deji. All right, that's our show this morning. Thank you so much. I am Toby Joseph. Yes, tomorrow it's a Friday. We can uh, continue with this uh, debate on air and on the different uh, social platform that we provided. Once again, we, our, we thank our guest, Walia Didayo. This is first time on radio since leaving office. Dele Ayodos, my name. I say God bless you all. God bless Nigeria. God bless Rock City. <laughs>